Right, g'day guys, how you going? Okay. Well tonight we're gonna go Tommy fishing again down Cape Jervis. Now some of you might have noticed I already did a Tommy video and now it has disappeared. Anyway, what happened is I did the wrong thing. So what I would like to say is that everyone out there, even if you think you're doing the right thing, just check purser and have a look at the fish what you're looking what you're going to go fishing for and just check the rules and regulations to do with that fishing species because I thought I knew but I didn't anyway so I removed my video because I don't want to be going on there and trying to help you guys who are trying to learn how to fish rah, rah, rah. I don't want to be teaching the wrong thing so that wasn't good so I apologize for that but anyway we're gonna go do it again um, a little bit later this afternoon but I just want to quickly run through my rig like I did before <coughs> firstly I'm gonna be using a number 8 hook one of my mustard pro select one of my favorite hooks fine wire gauged hook works really well with gents then I've got just a snood, this is, um, I think it might be 10 pound line or 8 pound line. Yeah, I think, I think it's 8 pound maxima. Yeah, just a snood going up to one of my modified bought burly springs. I just cut them in half. I put the swivel in the middle and that just clips onto my swivel on the end of the line just like that that's just so easy so yeah we clip him back on like that right and then I've got a couple of float stoppers see them float stoppers and I've got one of these I really like these floats they just clip on and off your line but they can move on your line so I've got the float stoppers on there as a precaution so it stays where I want it to you can use one of these floats with the you know they, it's got a hole in there you just thread that on your line obviously in between your float stoppers but I really like this one good this one you can take it off if you like you can slide your float stoppers down here and then you could, if you wanted, you could put a snood here, you know, another dropper loop. And you could fix another hook on there. And you could start, like, you know, just fishing with the weight of your burly spring off the jetty. Right. <clears throat> so that's my rig. Simple as. Just put my float back on there. How good is that? I like to fish about four foot down Cape Jervis. That is a good rig at Cape Jervis. It works a treat. Right. <clears throat> when I go down there, I take just a spool of spare line in case I need it. This is my spare tackle. I got a few, few pre-tied hooks on me cork, just in case I need them. There's some more of them float stoppers, you know, they're the bits what thread on your line. And these little pegs, you know, go into the hole and fix them onto your line. And in here I've got a couple more little burly springs. Look, I made that one myself, a little one. Or that's the other half of the bought one, but I cut in half. The reason I cut them in half is because a full burly spring would sink that float. I've also got one other size hook in here. It's um, just in case the Tommies are big. It's like a suicide style hook. But they're really good if because bigger Tommies on a smaller hook tend to shake off. So it's wise to maybe change the hook like that if you have to. So that's my spare tackle. I've also, you know, got a couple of swivels in there too. So there's my spare tackle, spare hooks, 
it on, that's it. Tommy tackle, and it's there float. That's all you need for that. Oh, and a glow light. Take a bit of tape as well in case you want to put it onto the end of your float for in the night time. Very important. So that's that. I'll be using maggots. In my maggots I tuna oil, garlic. This is all I do there. I get my garlic powder. Sprinkle some in there. That'll do. Bit of tuna oil. Now sometimes this can kill your maggots, but it's generally okay. So you might just want to do it on half of your maggots, because there's no way you'll use the whole packet, maybe even a third of them. Just give them a bit of a stir up with your float. There you go. Mar marinated maggots ready to go. Yum, I like I love doing stuff like that. Sometimes gives you an itch. Right, so that's that. That's all you need. Then I get my bread bag. There's my maggots, my spare tackle line all in there. My glow light. My spare float. That's that. And I got my burley. I I love to pre-mix a lot of burley. I don't do it a little bit at a time. There you go. I make it in batches. I got a bit of burley that's going to last me a few fishing trips and then I'll make some more. I make it all up and I spread it out all over this table. I let it dry a little bit and then I put it in there. You've got to let it dry because you don't want it going moldy. Alright guys, let's go fishing. Now I've done all that stuff. Let's go get some fish. See you guys. See you down there. Cape Jervis. There you have it, Cape Jervis. We'll hop on down there, we'll give it a go. A little bit of rain coming from over on the island, but I think that's gonna miss us. Wind's coming a little bit more from the west. This is good. Nice.
together a nice speed again. I won't be smoking these ones. Goes the ferry.
there she goes. Gonna be rough going over there, that's for sure. Might be some sick tummies aboard. Off to Kango Island. Nice little fish in there. Well, these are good, lovely. Yum. We'll tip them out back at the car. Oh. There we go. Nice. Nice catch. They will be all very much enjoyed. All right guys, well that's that. Thanks for watching. I know they're only little fish, but I had to show you anyway, but Tommies, they are delicious, well worth the effort. It's good to see a few around actually. So, you all be good, tight lines and all that stuff. And I'll see you somewhere else next time. All right guys, see ya. <laughs>